What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video and here today we're going to be doing some really fun as they're going to be doing a Shaden Sharp Portland Trailblazers rebuild. Before we get into these videos guys make sure you drop a like on this one of course subscribe if you're new to the channel as we have been growing at a pretty rapid rate so thank you guys so much for that because that's all because of you so again thank you very much but regardless the Portland Trailblazers have had a very, very interesting offseason, to say the least. Obviously, the big thing was they traded for Jeremy Grant, step one. Step two, they drafted Shane Sharp with the seventh overall pick. And step three, they signed Gary Payton, the third back. And then obviously, or I guess step three was re-signing Simons and Nurkic. And then step four was signing Gary Payton to the MLE. So, yeah, the Blazers are really close to the hard cap right now. So, there's a really good chance this might be the final roster and they make no other moves. Which is, uh, you know, it's interesting because, well, I think the Blazers got better defensively. Obviously, having like Gary Payton and Josh Hart is nice. And Grant as well, if he can be a plus defender. Then you definitely got better defensively. And Jeremy Grant definitely adds some more offense next to Simons and Lillard. So it's almost like CJ and Lillard again. And then you have Jeremy Grant, who could just be a really good offensive option as well next to them. Uh, but at the end of the day... We're very undersized. We're very undersized. Right now, our backup center is Drew Eubanks, which is not ideal. I uh, I don't know if he should be playing like crazy minutes. So yeah, that's interesting. Nasir Little is going to have to be the small forward probably of the season. So and then Trent Watford is probably going to be playing big minute. We'll see, man. This is the team right now. The Jeremy Grant trade does become official today. So we'll see if anything was like added onto the trade. I highly doubt it. I think this is going to be your Blazers roster, which again with this roster, I have no expectations. This team could very well surprise us and go all the way or very well be disappointed or i don't know about go all the way but make the playoffs i would say maybe like ceiling top five seed and then like as far as floor probably not making the playoffs so it's interesting i like the i'd like the roster i would have loved like a you know better backup big or a bigger a uh, small forward because right now we're pretty undersized like i said but we do have guys that play bigger than what they are but at the end of the day uh, Gary Payton 6'3", which is why we didn't really need another guard or 6'1", whatever, how, you know, however, however tall Gary Payton is. But we didn't really need a guard, but I know, I understand that Gary Payton plays bigger than he is. So maybe it'll work out. So I'm not making any other moves this offseason because right now I don't think the Blazers will. So if we sat right, sat down right now, well, I need to fix this real quick. If we sat down right now and this was our rotation, this is what it would look like. I'm going to change Chauncey to Perner centric, but this is what the team is going to look like. And it's going to be interesting because I, again, I don't know what to expect in real life. My expectations in real life are very, very just unknown. Basically. I don't know what to expect. So Damian Lord, Anthony Simons, Nasir Little, Jeremy Grant, Yusuf Nurkic. Already. I like the starting five. You definitely need a huge jump up from Nasir Little to be really good. Uh, hopefully he can make like a Mikel Bridges type jump. That might be a little too optimistic, but Hey man, if he can get something like that done, We'd be chilling. And then Jeremy Grant, obviously, is a great addition to the team. I like that a lot. And then Yusuf Nurkic, starting center. Probably the best starting center that we could have gotten this offseason, probably. And then Josh Hart, Gary Payton, Shane Sharp, and Drew Eubanks, and Trendon Watford. So I'm just going to run a nine-man rotation. And I actually want Trendon Watford playing over Eubanks. That's just my opinion. Whoa, what did I just do? What did I just do? Okay, there we go. Fix that. Okay, so this is what I want to do. So we got Trendon Watford playing those last few minutes over Drew Eubanks. So this is your rotation. So... Yeah, I assume Josh Hart and Gary Payton will be the first two guys off the bench. And then Sarah Little will start. And then Dave and Simons in the backcourt. So it's going to be interesting what to see or to see what this team's going to look like in real life. I'm going to boost Simon's shot tendency up. I want to see what he can become. Uh, so, and then obviously Shade Sharp. Obviously, he's the title of the video. We're going to see what kind of stud he can become. Uh, maybe we eventually start him at small forward or we trade Damian Lower away. It just kind of depends. Uh, Jeremy Grant's shot tendency is great. Josh Hart, I think, is way too low. So I'm going to boost that up quite a bit. And then Nasir Little. I do want him to be like taking a huge jump because I think he definitely can become a, a really good player. Start at that small forward spot. So Josh Hart moves out like a 68. And I think I'll roll with that. So we're going to go ahead and simulate this season with this new look Blazers roster and Shane Sharp, obviously, and the rotation as well. And we'll see how things go with that. So Dame Simons, Little, Grant, Nurkic, Josh Hart, Gary Payton, Shane Sharp, and Trenton Wofford. So let's go ahead and see if we can make the playoffs or is 2K going to, you know, say we suck. We'll see. I, like I said, in real life, I have no expectations, but in 2K, what do they expect? At the end of the season, Nikola Jokic wins MVP. Shout out to him, homegrown rookie of the year. He looked like an absolute stud in summer league yesterday. James Harden, six man. Yas defense player, Halliburton, most approved. And Willie Green's coach of the year. And Kylo, Kyle Harper is your executive. I really need to fix the James Harden being a six man on this uh, roster. I don't know why he's a six man. I mean, he hasn't even signed yet in real life. So I, I think that's why I haven't fixed it yet. But regardless, 
uh luka Jokic, lamello Giannis, tatum did we get damian lillard on an all nba team here i mean we should because we got the damn second seed how do you not get an all nba team after leading this roster to a second seed i'm ecstatic man 2k gave us the second seed we went 52 and 30 behind the pelicans so we were the second best team in the west which is really promising so 27 from dame 20 from anthony simons 14 and a half from jeremy grant 13 from josh hart 12 from shane sharp 11 from Nasir little and then 10 from Nurkic. so yeah very very promising outcome this season so i'm very very excited to see how we did and then i do want to take a look at the standings because like i said uh or points allowed per game this is what i kind of wanted to see so uh looks like we were still a pretty bad defense uh for the most part but i guess it could have been worse uh points per game we we're i'm assuming we we're pretty high yeah so you're pretty high in the offensive spectrum i honestly feel like the blazers are going to be better defensively than they have been in the past obviously with guys like gary payton and josh hart being here and jeremy grant stuff like that so we'll see though i am going to be playing the los angeles lakers in round one who just got thomas bryant yesterday so he is on the roster so shout out to the lakers we got russell westbrook still here beverly lebron stanley johnson wait beverly's on the lakers how did that happen huh not sure how that happened cool for them i guess uh thomas bryant taylor hort tucker austin reeves lonnie walker hassan Whiteside, juan toscano and damian jones so let's see what happens in these playoffs game one we're down one to zero starting start things off shane sharp drops 26 in his first playoff game I mean, hey, if he wants to do that, obviously this man's a star in the making. So we'll see. And I, oh, did he make an all rookie team? I wasn't even paying attention to that. It looks like he did. It said something about it. Game two, we even it up 133 to 117. Uh, so since we are the second seed, obviously I'm not looking to be upset by the Lakers here up three to one. And we beat them in six, hopefully. Yes, we're on to the second round. So things are looking promising. And now I get to play the Minnesota Timberwolves. So this is where it could be very, very scary for the Blazers because obviously, as we know, the Timberwolves are huge. They're huge. And the Blazers, on the other hand, not so much. So I don't know how well this would go in a series. Like, imagine, because like I said, our biggest small forward, technically, uh, starting right now, is 6'5". So obviously, Jaden McDaniels is like 6'10", I believe, 6'9", or something like that. So yeah, this could be crazy. I mean, obviously, the Blazers would be going small the whole the whole series, and then the Timberwolves would probably stay big, and then we just kind of have to see what would give. You know what I mean? I don't know what 2K is going to expect out of this. We're a very small roster going up a very, very going up against a very big one. So game one, we're up one to zero though. We actually blew them out, believe it or not. 101 to 108. That's kind of crazy. Damn. Okay. Game two, they even it up with 16 to 100. Fair enough. Game three, we're up two to one. We're 32 to 121. Okay. If we win a championship year number one, I should, I should tamper my expectations. Can we win game five? We cannot. So this is not good. Game six in Minnesota. Got to force this back to Portland if we want any chance. Let's see if we could do just that. Game six in Minnesota. First quarter looks good. Dropped 52 in the first quarter. So losing this is not an option after all that. So looking good. And I think we have forced the game seven back to Portland. So 158, 134. Dame drops 45. Shooting 9 to 13 from three to send us back to Portland. So here we go. Game seven with the Portland Trailblazers on, at home at the Rose Garden. Let's go ahead and take care of business. Let's not lose to Minnesota. Okay, we win the first quarter. Second quarter is looking like it's our win. Third quarter, got to win it. And it's a close game. I think we might be going to the Western Conference Finals, baby. We are. So just like that. Uh, again, baby, I have no... I don't know why I said baby. But again, I had no expectations for this team. Uh, and we got all the way to Western Conference Finals. And look who we get to play. It's a team that just won the championship. And obviously, the last time the Blazers were in the Western Conference Finals, this is the team they face. So yeah we'll see man are they gonna sweep us again or do we get some revenge the fact that we made it all the way here though is very promising so i'm happy about that game one we're down one to zero lose by two 32 and 23 did not uh work out game two we're down two to zero uh-oh is this a repeating of history no it's gonna be a repeat of history oh wait we're in game four we won game five okay we're not done yet wait can we make the warriors Remember when it, you know, remember when uh, everyone would say, don't let this distract you from the fact the Warriors blew a three to one lead. What if we could do that again, but this time it's a three to zero lead by the Warriors. I don't know if we could do that. Game six though is going to be big. If we get send this back to Portland for game seven, we'd be in business, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. It looks like they're going to take a, take care of business in game six. Very unfortunate, man. We did get all the way to the Western Conference finals, but unfortunately we come up short. The Hawks and Warriors in the finals and we got... The Atlanta Hawks going on to win it all. So we got all the way to the Western Conference Finals, which is very, very promising. That was only our first year with Shane Sharp on the roster. So 
I expect to just keep going and uh, maybe make some significant trades this offseason. Maybe get try to get bigger if we can. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So OKC, uh, Phoenix, and Rockets are your first three picks in this draft. Staff signing. I'm going to keep that all the same. I'm going to assume I can't sign anybody. Yeah, we're full. So unfortunately, I can't bring anybody in. And we don't have our draft pick because it goes to the Chicago Bulls, which means all of our other draft picks are opened up. So we can maybe make a trade with three of our draft picks, which is really nice. And we can match some salary a little bit. It's going to be tough. But maybe Nurkic is the guy we trade away to upgrade the center position because he would be the one that I, you know, look at and be kind of the guy that I would want to make a move on. Because I like Gary Payne and Josh Hart off the bench. They're, you know, some of our best defenders on the roster. Trenton Wofford, Shane Sharper, obviously safe to say. So we'll see. We'll see what we could do. So uh, if we take a look around the league, uh, what could we use right now? If we trade Nurkic, we need a better center, right? So that's going to be the one thing we need to focus on. So if we vid player finder, the center position. So obviously Jokic's not going to happen. And B probably not going to happen. AD could happen, but I have to match crazy salary. Jarrett Allen. Love the idea of Jared Allen, but I'm not sure why the Cavs would do that. So bonus, no thanks. He Occam. Uh, we would have to, it'd be tough to match. Sorry, but I do. I love the idea of Siakam on this roster. Low key, I do. Uh, so maybe we do something like that. Try to get Pascal Siakam for the Raptors. Capella also could be interesting. But I think Pascal Siakam is going to be my dream scenario this offseason. That's what I'm going to try to go for. So it's going to be tough, but I am going to try to get Pascal Siakam with three of my picks. So Raptors. I don't even know what, what was their team into right now. Let me see what they're sitting at. I don't even know if they made the playoffs or not. I'm assuming they did. They're buying. So I don't know if uh, that would mean they are willing to give up Siakam, but uh, sign me up if they are. So Raptors, if I gave them, you, he's on an expiring contract as well. If I gave them use of Nurkic and all three of my picks in the future, would they accept this is my question. So all three of my picks in the future, and then I literally have nothing else to offer right as of right now, unless I offered Watford, which I don't want to do. And obviously I'm not offering that. So let's see if they would just accept this three picks and Nurkish for Siakam. They do not agree. Okay, fair enough. So we'll come back to them in a second. So let's go to player options and let's maybe have a little bit more of our younger players. So like Keon Johnson, Greg Brown, maybe throw in the trade through, you know, sweeten the pot a little bit. And then Kelgen Blevins, the Sierra Little, Brandon Williams, free agency time. Obviously Jeremy Grant's a free agent. We do still plan on bringing him back in this Sierra Little. But I still do want Siakam very badly to add to this roster. So Nurkic for Pascal Siakam. Can we get it done? Siakam, again, I'm adding all my picks again because this is the upgrade I want to make. And then we'll add Keon Johnson to the trade. That, agree oh, that gets it done. Let's go. So Keon Johnson, Nurkic get us Pascal Siakam here in Portland. We love it. So I'm going to move Siakam to power forward. And I'm going to have him play. Maybe power forward slash center for when we go smaller. So obviously Siakam is somebody I desperately want from the Raptors. And again, it would probably cost a lot to get him. So maybe I'm going to get him for that much like I just did. But regardless, I'm getting him here in 2K. He's on an expiring contract and I'm happy with that. So Siakam, Simons, and Dame. And I'm trying to win a championship here. And Shane Sharp's going to be uh, playing a huge role as well. I do want to see a little and Jeremy Grant back. And obviously we have a huge gaping hole at the center position. So we definitely need to get a center. So can we get like a good center? Neuro's the well probably is going to have to be the best option right now. So I'm going to go for Neuro's the well on a two-year contract. And I just realized I messed something up. Wait, hold on. I got to fix something real quick. All right, boys. So I went ahead and reversed that Siakam trade because I just realized I made a huge mistake. I mean, it doesn't affect the video too much now that I have it fixed because I obviously haven't made a move until up to this point. But I do have salary cap off for when I'm like updating the free agency for like the free agency in real life or, you know, when we wait on DeAndre Ayton because some of the players that have been signed in real life, obviously, uh, like the Nets couldn't afford TJ Warren because TJ Warren was asking for too much. So I'd have salary cap off. And I realized when I made that trade for Siakam, I had salary cap off. So I've reversed it and now it's back on, obviously. So I'm going to try to trade again. Uh, that way, there's no, obviously, you know, no cheating. I, I didn't mean to have it on. So. Siakam for Nurkic. Obviously, the salary did not match, so that probably didn't make any sense how I was able to pull the trade. So that makes a little bit more sense. So I reversed the trade, and maybe we do have to give up Josh Hart or Gary Payton here to make this trade happen. So I guess I am willing to do that. I'll give him 2024, 2027. It definitely sucks to let go of Josh Hart, but if I get Siakam, I guess I can't complain. So I'm going to offer this again, and they do agree. So this time I do it legit. So uh, Josh Hart's in the trade this time around. So I apologies for that. But I did notice it and I fixed it. So hopefully you guys aren't too upset. So free agency, Jeremy Grant. Okay, so I still needed a center, which I still didn't need Nero as well, which I still think I could have afforded him. But I realized 
Uh, oh, okay. We already have an offer on him. So I do want this here, or Nero's as well because he's probably going to be our best option as a starting center right now. So definitely still want him. So Nero as well, we should be able to get. I'm going to monitor Jeremy Grant. He has no offers right now. Uh, I'm going to make sure I keep it that way because I actually, I think I should be able to get Jeremy Grant still regardless. But just in case, I got Nero as well secured and now I can offer Jeremy Grant, which I think Jeremy Grant's going to want a lot more than that. I'm going to assume he's going to get around like the same contract he got. So I'm going to give him four year, $20 million extension because I'm pretty sure that's what he's going to get in real life. I don't imagine he signs for $9 million per year. That's just kind of crazy. So Grant's going to get paid by us, I assume. He's probably going to get extended after the trade, to be honest with you. I would not be surprised. So looking at the roster now, it's Damian Lillard. You have Shane Sharp, uh, Anthony Simons, Gary Payton, and then you have Nasir Lillard, the small forward. Obviously, you have Siakam, Jeremy Grant, Wofford, and Greg Brown, and then you have Nero as well. So I want to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to have Jeremy Grant play some small forward next to Siakam which is what my dream starting five would have been anyway, but obviously that did not happen. So I'm going to have Jeremy Grant, obviously backup position, be power forward. So I'll have that fixed. So I have Jeremy Grant, small forward slash power forward. I'll be Dame and then Shane Sharp. Uh, not sure how he's going to fit here, but we're going to try to make it work. And then, so we got basically got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we pretty much have our full rotation. Uh, Nerds Wells is going to be the starting center. And then Drew Eubanks, we could sign back, I guess, uh, to maybe throw him in a trade another time. So I'll sign him back. And then that will be it. So I think I'm good. So let's go to player progression after all that. And let's see how well it treats us. So player progression, we got Dame going down. Shane Sharp's up to an 83. Siakam's up to an 86. So things are looking good. Gary Payton is up one. So let's go into this next, or down one, I should say. Let's go into this next season and let's see how things look. For this full rotation after acquiring Siakam and having Jeremy Grant back as well. So if we go ahead and load this draft class and then look at the rotation, this should be very, very exciting. So Power Rank is going to land us at 24, which is not great. But looking at the starting five, this is what it looks like. So they actually don't want to start Jeremy Grant. So honestly, if we are not going to start Jeremy Grant this season, I'd rather just, which I think we would, but it'd be Dame Simons. Uh, then you have Jeremy Grant, probably the small forward over Nasir Little, although I do like that. And then J N Shane Sharp is a six man right now. And they want to start Drew Eubanks, which I totally disagree with. I definitely would rather have, have it be Nero's as well. And then Gary Payton. So yeah, this is going to be kind of, oh, it's a nine man rotation. I need to fix that actually. So Jeremy Grant, I do want him to start over Nasir Little still. And then Gary Payton, Nero's as well. And then I actually want uh, Drew Eubanks not getting those minutes. I want uh, this to be 15. And we'll swap that with Trendon Watford to play those other minutes. And then we'll have him play 15 here or 15 or something like that. 16. And then we'll have Norswell play 26 minutes, something along the lines of that. So that's what our rotation is going to look like. This will be Dame, Simons, Jeremy Grant, Siakam. You have Norswell, Shane Sharp as your six man, Nasir Little, Gary Payton, and Trendon Watford. So I like this rotation. Proficiency wise, this three and a half from our centric. Uh, is it four star? No. So only three and a half is what we can get to. So let's go ahead and simulate this season. Let's see how this Blazers roster does. We got all the way to the Western Conference Finals last year. So hopefully with Siakam being added to this, we can make it all the way to uh, the finals again. So at the end of the season, Lamella Ball wins MVP. Victor Webanyama wins Rookie of the Year. Drummond's your six man. Giannis defensive player. Shane Sharp wins most improved player, averaging 24 and 3 and 47% from three. I cannot wait to watch this guy tomorrow, man. He plays Summer League basketball tomorrow. Cannot wait. Nick Nurse, Coach of the Year, Executive Nathan Mack. A lot of what the Blazers season uh, is going to be is going to be reliant on how good Shane Sharp is because obviously a lot of untapped potential, a lot of, uh, you know, mystery around him. We'll see how it goes, man. I'm hoping for the best when it comes to Shane Sharp. Maybe Shane Sharp can become our, uh, trying to think of an example of a team that, you know, had, you know, maybe become our Jordan Poole, I guess, or I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example, but I really can't think of one. Some surprise rookie that came in has made an impact right away, but can't really think of an example right now so here's your nba team still didn't have anybody as we got the fourth in the west this year we get the pelicans around one so player stats we had 25 from dame uh 23 from simons 20 from shane sharp 17 and a half from siakam 14 from jeremy grant 12 from this little five from wofford five from gary payton and then four from nor as well also two blocks per game so no as well which is kind of our rim running center which is what i needed him to be obviously and then wofford with five necessarily little with 12 and then german grant with 14 and then siakam so honestly though i do have a game plan if we do not win a championship this year so uh i am not too upset if things do not go our way this year but i love this starting five honestly damian lord simons jeremy grant siakam neuros and well defensively that's really good next to simons and dame and then shane sharp as your six men this year gary payton trend and wofford so things are really nice so let's see if we can beat the pelicans around one which is not going to be easy 
They no longer have... Oh, they do have CJ McCollum. He's coming off the bench. So, Dame versus CJ. This is exciting stuff. Game one, we're up 1-0. Beat them pretty badly. So, Zion drops 39, and we still win. Game two, we're up 2-0. So, so far, we take care of home court advantage. 35 from Dame. Game three, we're up 3-0. Am I really about to sweep the Pelicans? Wow, it's a freaking miracle. I don't know if I've ever in the history of my 2K career have swept the Pelicans. So, I will take that, and I will run with it, for my friends. We go ahead and take care of the Pelicans, and now we get the AFC to Denver Nuggets. So we low-key could have a ticket back to the Western Conference Finals. It's this time we don't have to deal with the Timberwolves, which is good. So, Jamal Murray, Christian Brown, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, Jokic, Bones Highland, Bruce Brown, Zeke Naji, and then uh, Kamagate, or however you say his name. So here we go. Game one. We're down 1-0. Of course, it's an AFC. Scariest thing ever are AFC seeds. Game two. We even it up. We beat them by 60. Holy moly. Game third. Wow, that was a uh, that was a clinic. We beat them by 60 points. Game three. Bro, I'm really not trying to lose to the Denver Nuggets here. We're, we even it up. Okay, so game five, very, very important game. We cannot afford to drop game five if we want to go back to the Western Conference Finals here. So can we do that? Uh, it's looking good so far. Uh, obviously, anything is possible, though. Looks like we got this one. So game five looks like it's in the books, and we do win game five. Shane drop, drops 27, so he's been a stud. Can we win game six? Yes, we can. We are back to the Western Conference Finals. We either get the Warriors again or we get the Thunder again. Let's see what we get. We get the Warriors. So we're back facing the Golden State Warriors. This time they get home court advantage. And then you have Atlanta and Philly on the other side. So Golden State for a third time at the Western Conference Finals. They have Cameron Reddish here now. So Steph and Jordan Poole starting together. Wiggins has joined the bench. And they have Clay on the bench. Looney. So obviously it's a very deep Warriors team against a deep Blazers team. So we lost in six last time. So game one, we're down one to zero. Start things off. Do not win game one. Game two, we even it up. Okay, very nice. So we're not out of it just yet. So we win one on their home floor. Game three, they win one on our home floor. Game four, we even it up. Okay, we win by one point in game four. Holy moly. Game five is huge. This is going to be what in, in, you know, Golden State or in San Francisco, I should say. Here we go, man. Game four or game five, I should say. Big game five. Maybe I should have listened to 2K and their rotational adjustments. Yeah, so we are going to lose here. And man, the Warriors are going to be our Achilles heel in this video, aren't they? Okay. I'm going to run an eight-man rotation since we have one more chance of getting eliminated. They want to start Shane Sharp. You know what? That's fine. That is totally fine. So game six. And Portland to force a game seven back to the Warriors. Are we going to get dropped in six again by the Warriors? Are we going to actually fight for our lives here and force a game seven back to the Warriors? Come on, baby. Looking good so far, but it's a close game. And it's, oh gosh, close as it can be. And we lose 137-130. So the Warriors continue to just blow our parade up, man. And we lose. So the Warriors and 76ers in the finals. I'm going to run it back one more year with this team. I am going to make a drastic trade, though, this offseason probably. So draft lottery time. Uh, this is not going to matter, obviously, for us. Celtics get the number one overall pick, which is kind of crazy to see. The so Boston is in the territory of being bad now. But, man, we've been to the Western Conference Finals twice. And we come up short both times. That's so unfortunate. So, I do want to keep Chauncey Billups because he's done a great job. So, let's just go ahead and make sure he is back if I can find him anyway. Yeah, so Chauncey Billups. Let's we'll keep him around. Sign him up. And then, hopefully, we could fill out this coaching staff uh, and fill it up maybe this time. I don't know if that will make a huge difference, but... I would like to have a full coaching staff if possible. So go ahead and grab these two guys. We got that going for us. And then get a few other guys. So like Blake can come here and then big man coach. We got Carlisle if I can get him as well. Carlisle declines. Okay, let's try it again. Carlisle, you're still here. Might as well just accept my offer. And then uh, other than that, Shot Doctor, we get Sylvester Manning and we get both of them. So full coaching staff. I don't know if that'll make a difference, but to draft night we go. And see, here's the other thing. So since Shaden Sharp has been a stud, I think Jeremy Grant becomes a little bit more expendable. And we could try to trade him for like a center, if a good center. So I know who I want. Mitchell Robinson would be fine. Uh, he would be a, an okay addition. Miles Turner to the Spurs. We give them a second round pick. I mean, he'd be an upgraded center spot. Maybe I give them a first to entice the Spurs a little bit more. 2028, 20, and they agree. So we get Miles Turner to be our brand new starting center to help that out a little bit more. Inside defense is there. And then that gives Shaden Sharp the keys to the starting small forward spot. And he's going to play a huge role this year. So player options. Damian Lord accepts his player option. Of course, Shaden Sharp will bring him back. So last chance technically here to win it all. So Siakam, I definitely need him back, obviously. So let's make sure we get Siakam back. And then I want the rest of the guys back as well. So Siakam is our brand new power forward. Kind of replacing Jeremy Grant. So Siakam will bring him back. 
Siakam, Jeremy Grant was solid, but this time, this year, we obviously have Miles Turner this time, and then Greg Brown. Uh, you know, I don't really care if he comes back or not, but Trina Wofford, I'll bring back. And then looking at the rotation now, Dame, you got Gary Payton, Shane Sharp. So I think I'm going to go ahead and move Shane Sharp to small for this year. I mean, it depends how good defensively Shane Sharp is. He does have like the wingspan to play small forward. Uh, I think he's like 6'4 in real life. It says on 2K, he's like 6'6 six, uh, six here. Uh, but if he has the wingspan, he should be able to do it. it just depends how good defensively he is. But we are going to start him this year. So it's going to be Dame, Simons, Gary Payton, Nasir Little, Shane Sharp. Uh, Siakam Watford and then Nardo's as well and Miles Turner. So we have our full rotation. Third time could be a charm for us. We've got to the Western Conference Finals twice. Player progression is probably not going to treat Dame very good as he's down to an 85, but that's okay because Shane Sharp, Siakam, and Anthony Sam is going to carry us the rest of the way. So let's go ahead and simulate season number three. Let's find out if third time is a charm or not. Let's find out. Let's see what happens. So here we go, baby. Is third time a charm going up against the Timberwolves in round one as we got the fourth seed. So looking at the player stats for this final season, 25 from Simons, 23 from Dame, and then 22 from Shane Sharp, 15 from Siakam, 13 and a half from Nasir Little, 8 from Miles Turner, and 7, all the most three blocks per game, which is exactly what we needed. And Trenton Watford and Greg Brown, and then Kimball Walker was some, for some reason part of the rotation. So when did Kimball Walker join the team? I don't even, I don't remember when that happened. So uh, is he getting minutes? No. It looks like Gary Payton lost his minutes, which I find unfortunate. But, oh, wait, I never made this a nine-man rotation. So we were running an eight-man rotation all year, which is uh, my bad, I guess. But I'm going to put Neuro's Dwell over Greg Brown just because I want Neuro's Dwell be like another shot block and center off the bench for us. So that's my fault. But we did get the fourth seed still, and we're four star or four and a half perimeter centric. So you get to play Minnesota in round one, uh, who obviously have Gobert. So this should be interesting. Now, obviously, like I said, it's third time a charm. Game one, up one is zero on the Timberwolves. So, good start. Shane Sharp drops 35. He is leading us to victory, hopefully. We lose by four in game two. We win game three. Beat them pretty badly. Win game four, and we win game six, hopefully. Yeah, so we're on to the second round to play. The Sacramento Kings don't have to deal with the Warriors this time. That's kind of promising. But now we get the nut or the Kings. They have Keegan Murray, which I do need to do a Kings rebuild. Jordan Walsh uh, is our starting small forward. But yes, I do need to do another Kings rebuild because obviously I never did a Keegan Murray Kings rebuild and they've signed or they traded for Kevin Hurt and signed Malik Monk. So definitely want to get to a Kings rebuild soon for sure. But game one against the AFC, game one we win. Game two we win. Game three we lose. We are up three to one and we beat them in six hopefully. Yes, yeah, so we're on to the Western Conference Finals. Once again, third year in a row, we've made it to the Western Conference Finals. But this year we get the Thunder. So uh, Thunder obviously... They have Chet Holmgren and Pokoshevsky and Chet Holmgren are in Victor Webanyama is what I meant to say. Man, imagine a front court of Chet and Victor Webanyama. That sounds scary as, I don't know, that just sounds scary. Game one, we're up one to zero though. Okay, so good start. Game two, two to zero, three to zero. Are we about to sweep the thunder after all that? No, 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 no three zero comebacks. Bro, why does this always happen in 2K? Three to zero comebacks do not happen all that often. And we are in a game seven in the Western Conference Finals, where we finally could have got to the final. Bro, please, 2K. Please let me win this. Please let me win this. It's looking good so far. They take the lead, and we're going to lose in the Western Conference Finals for the third year in a row after being up 3-0. to zero. Bro, this game, it, it hates me. Thunder going to win the championship. That is so disappointing, man. Three years in a row, Western Conference Finals appearances. Finally had a chance to get to the finals, up 3-0 to zero on the Thunder, and they beat us in seven. I hope you guys enjoy the video regardless. Uh, let me know what you guys think overall about what you see happening with Shane Sharp. What kind of potential do you see out of him? But drop a like if you enjoyed. This is Crushables. I'm going to head out after all that. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.